Today we are adding one of our highest value cards yet. Let's talk about it. Guys, welcome back to the collection series, the series where we take a look at some cards we have added to our collection binder that we started a few weeks ago. We've got 12 new picks, 12 new amazing cards that I wanna run through with you guys today. Now, as a reminder, I did ask that you guys take part in this collection series with me today. We have got tons of awesome stuff, but I want to hear your stories, not just my own. I want to know what cards you are collecting, what things you've added to your binder, to your decks, whatever it might be. Share your story down below in the comments. Now, as you share your stories, also make sure to add what is your favorite card from this video that we've added to our binder. I would love to hear what you guys have to say, some awesome thoughts from you guys, and hopefully, again, some, some really cool stories about your collection. Now, today we are gonna do things just slightly different. We still got 12 awesome cards to go through, but we're gonna do it in actual collection Wooberg order. We're gonna go through all of the individual colors. We've got multicolor, we've got artifact, and we've got land. So we've got something for every color basically here today. Uh, and I cannot wait to jump in. So let's go ahead, let's do that right now. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into the white color we have got today. We've only got one card for white, but it is a really interesting one. It is a game day reciprocate. Uh, reciprocate? I hope I'm saying that. I, I, I'm bad at pronouncing things. Uh, regardless, guys, this is a really cool card. Uh, these full art textless versions of the cards are things that you've seen us in the in the collection update. You've seen some of these already. Uh, some of them certainly have more value than others. This is certainly on the lower end of the value chain. However, it's still a beautiful card and still something that I'd love to collect. And so I did actually pick up two of these, I believe. O only, of course, adding one to the binder. No, no duplicates for us. Uh, but it is a really special card, a really beautiful card love the artwork i mean look how just crazy exciting that artwork is uh and again it's just a beautiful version of this card Th these game day promos are not something that you get to see anymore these are not something that really get gets made at all uh and so there's something unique to this that uh, almost feels like the frame of a token more so than anything else uh but is obviously a true card and just really special and so i do love when these pop up i do love picking them up uh, just some of my favorite cards to collect. I've actually got a handful of them in a different binder uh, that I really love to add to every once in a while. And so this is a great addition to our, our collection binder. Next up, we are moving into blue and we're going to start with one of my favorite cards, actually, uh, Misdirection. I love old school Misdirection. This is a Mercadian Masks card, uh, which, you know, there's a lot of uh, stink around Mercadian Masks for certain reasons. It's not the best set in the world. There are some very high value cards in it, though. Uh, and while this isn't super high value, it does certainly hold some. This is much more of an old school, like vintage legacy card than you would see in uh, a lot of, you know, you're not ever going to see this, of course, in modern. It's not legal. Never going to get reprinted in standard, I imagine. Uh, but it's three and, a, and two blue for an instant. You can remove a blue card in your hand from the game, though, instead of playing the mana card. Uh, or paying the mana cost and then target spell with a single target targets another target instead so essentially this is just a complete redirect effect uh and while yeah you don't have to pay the cost it's kind of free but it's not really i mean you are it's card disadvantage uh however it is a really powerful effect and certainly one that i love to have this and things like stifle are cards that i really love to pick up I don't know why. Uh, they're just really tricky little blue cards that I think are fun. Uh, and so this did come up. Ooh, this did come up. And uh, I was like, man, you know, I got to have this. I love this card. Uh, the old school artwork as well is something that I really love. I've actually collected quite a few of the newer artwork, uh, which I think might have been a cons was it a conspiracy card? I don't remember when what set it was from. Uh, but regardless, I, uh, I didn't have the old artwork. And so this was something that I really wanted to pick up. I love the old school artwork. And just again, a beautiful, really cool and semi-powerful card to add to the collection. Now, speaking of powerful cards, we have another freebie card as well. A beautiful, beautiful Gataxian Probe. Guys, uh, Gataxian Probe is a ridiculous card. Let's just get that out of the way right now. It's essentially free. You pay two life most of the time. You look at target player's hand and you draw a card. Now, here's some interesting things about this. Yes, it's sorcery speed, but... You don't really have to pay the cost for it, which means you can be mana efficient. You can play this as well as something else. <clears throat> uh, you can look at target player's hand, which as we all know, is one of the most powerful things you can do in the game. Information is king in Magic. 
looking at the opponent's hand gives you a freebie opportunity to decide, okay, yes, I can go for this, or no, I cannot. Uh, and it also shows you what kind of things you need to be looking for in the, the course of a game. If you play this turn one, you see what the opponent's up to, you can figure out what your game plan needs to be after that fact. Now, if that wasn't good enough, you also replace it, <laughs> uh, which is not card advantage necessarily. However, it's basically card neutral, uh, which is pretty amazing. So essentially, for two life, you get all the information you could ever need, uh, at least to start the game, and you get to replace the card in your hand. That's insane. Uh, and obviously, Wizards thought so as well, because this card has been banned in most formats. <laughs> Uh, it's an absolutely ridiculous card. It's a very powerful one. I never was able to pick up the promo version, uh, and so this is actually a brand new card for me. I do have a lot of the regular versions of this card, uh, but I never got to pick up the judge. Or uh, I don't think is this a judge foil? It might be, uh, but it is a it is a promo, and it's just one that I'm happy to have here. Uh, love Gataxian Probe. I'm a Storm player at heart, uh, and so this is certainly a card that really speaks to me. Uh, and again, it's just a really cool card to have in the binder. Uh, really unique as well. All right, guys, moving on to black. This is possibly my favorite card out of uh, today's set collection uh, update. It is Yagmoth's Bargain. This card is ridiculous. So um, this did get replaced by a number of other things like Necropotence later on. Uh, but this is a really powerful card in a number of different uh, decks and strategies, in particular Storm. Um, but the idea here is that you skip your draw step, but you can pay a life and draw a card, and you can do that at any time. Uh, now, it is six mana to get this out on the field, but for Storm decks, you can usually Dark Ritual or uh, Cabal Ritual your way into, I believe it's Cabal Ritual, uh, into uh, uh, playing this pretty early and then just refill your hand and play a bunch of cheap stuff like a taxi and probe uh, to win the game. Uh, this card is insane. <laughs> uh, cube is really where I wanted to pick this up, so I didn't have this card before. Uh, I didn't even have... No, I, I, yeah, I didn't have Necropotence before either. They play a similar role, uh, and so I wanted to pick up both of these for cube, uh, and I have. We've got a Necropotence on the way, so we'll see that in a couple weeks. But uh, this is a really, really powerful card, guys. Uh, now, obviously, it does have that life loss, uh, which is going to be something you have to consider when you are playing this card. You don't want to lose too much life, but if you can win the game, it's a great way to just fill the hand up, uh, play as much as you can, and then storm off for the win. Uh, this is a great addition for that. Uh, and again, it does actually hold quite a bit of value. This isn't a card that we, we see all that often, but uh, it is very, very powerful. And so obviously a card that I'm happy to have here. Just a freaking cool card, man. <laughs> That's all it is. All right, moving on to red, we have actually got a really interesting addition. It is a From the Vault version of a Chroma Angel of Fury. Now, From the Vault was a kind of, I think it was an annual series that they did. This was From the Vault Angels. They did From the Vault Annihilation. They've done a lot of these, uh, but they all sort of follow a particular theme. So obviously this one was just filled with a lot of angels. Baneslayer Angel might have been in there. I, I really don't remember. Uh, I did not pick it up originally. Uh, in fact, I didn't even have anywhere close to enough money to pick it up, even though it wasn't crazy, crazy expensive. But uh, this is certainly a really cool card. The beautiful, beautiful artwork. I mean, just look at that stunning artwork. Uh, the foiling has actually held up pretty well. Uh, and so the, the card, I know it's in a sleeve, but it really hasn't bent or anything like that, which I'm very happy about. Uh, these From the Vault cards are interesting because the foiling is uh, a different process. Uh, and so you get kind of these unique streaks of shine uh, throughout the card. Obviously, the whole thing is foil, but that's kind of what's, uh, what separates it as a foil from the normal foils that you get to see, you know, if you just open up a pack or something like that. Uh, I did actually pick up some other From the Vault cards, but they are not in this series. They're From the Vault Delvers. Uh, because I did make a Delver deck recently. Um, but this is just a powerful card. It's not something that's like seeing a lot of play anywhere that I can think of, aside from maybe, I guess, uh, a commander. But in general, it's not a, a card that you're going to see very often. It's just a really cool and unique card. Uh, and I love picking up things like that. Again, if they show up on that random Scryfall search, they're generally cards I'm going to pick up. And so this is certainly a cool one. Just a really beautiful card. I mean, that's that's the reality of it. And that's honestly why I picked it up. All right, guys. So next we're jumping into green. And both of these cards have some unique history. We're, we're going to start with um, a, a really cool one. This is a beta tranquility. 
Now, beta cards are obviously in the very, very old school days of Magic. Obviously, a beautiful black border around this. Uh, not a great, powerful card by any means. It's two and a green for a sorcery. All enchantments in play must be discarded. It's a powerful ability for sure, but certainly not one that we're going to see a lot of in play. The, the value of this card comes from the fact that it is from the original days of Magic. I know it's not alpha, uh, but it is beta, and that in itself is a very unique piece for the collection. Uh, before starting this binder, I only had one beta card, I believe, as well as maybe a handful of uh, lands. Um, we've added so far, I think only two. We've added Giant Spider and now Tranquility uh, to the binder, but I'm really looking forward to adding more old school beta cards to the collection. I think uh, something about um, pulling one of these old school historic pieces, uh, regardless of the, the inherent playability of the card, is just something special that uh, not everybody has the opportunity to collect. And so, um, especially in today's day and age where standard gameplay is so pushed and so you know, the norm. Um, a lot of people only focus on that, and there's nothing wrong with that. Certainly, if that's what you decide to collect, that's fantastic. Uh, but for me, where where magic gets really cool is that old kind of historic, nostalgic look at some of these beautiful, beautiful old cards. Now, this, I believe, has been reprinted since then, but having the beta version is really special, in my opinion. And again, just some beautiful art by Douglas there. Just stunning. Absolutely stunning. Now, speaking of unique cards, we have got a really special one as well. And this is actually my first Portal 3 Kingdoms card. It is Spring of Eternal Peace, three and two green, you gain eight life. Not a particularly powerful card, surprising. Uh, but the uh, Portal 3 Kingdoms was meant to be, uh, so first of all, Portal was meant to be an intro, an intro set for players. So for that reason, there are a lot of things that were not included in the set. Uh, as an example, Instance were not in the set. Uh, now, this is original Portal, but uh, Portal 3 Kingdoms was a look at the set from the perspective of, like, old uh, Asian history. Uh, and I, I'm being very careful not to say Japanese or Chinese. I think it's Chinese, but I want I, I don't want to be insulting, so I, I, I could be wrong there. Uh, but the reality is a lot of the cards in this set reflected such a beautiful art style were very unique and cards that we didn't get any more of. And so this is a, a really, uh, not, while it is just a common, it's a really cool value piece to have in the collection. <clears throat> now, some other cards that I would love to pick up from this set are the generals. Uh, you can get Guan Yu, you can get uh, some really powerful cards actually. Um, but the reality is these are cards that we haven't seen in years and years and years. In fact, uh, when was this actually released? 1999. Uh, and so this isn't something that we're going to get to see, in my opinion, uh, for quite some time uh, and maybe not ever. And so I thought, you know what, let's let's pick this up. This is a special one. Uh, these do, like I said, have some inherent value just because they're they're a limited set. Uh, and so it was really special to have this again. My first Portal 3 Kingdoms card in my entire collection, in my entire life. Uh, and so this is certainly a cool one to have. I'm really, really happy for this one. All right, guys, moving into the multicolor slot. We're actually jumping back to game day. Uh, text list art or, or text list uh, full art promos here. We have got a Mortify, just a really interesting card. That 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 image is a little gruesome, but uh, I really do like this. Uh, Mortify is just a cool card anyway, um, but it's one, a white and a black and just really, I mean, these these textless versions of the card are just something so special and again i've talked a lot about this so i won't harp on it but these are cards that anytime i can i pick up the, we saw i think in the first first video uh of the binder we saw a foil wrath of god which was really cool uh certainly this doesn't compare to that in terms of value but uh, in terms of cards I don't have, I didn't have it, and so I picked it up, uh, and I'm really happy I did. I love these. Really happy to have this in there. Not a ton to talk about here. Again, we've kind of harped on the, the textless uh, full arts here, but just a beautiful card. Uh, and our last multicolor card, only two today, we have got Hunting Grounds. This is actually just a really unique card uh, that does have some value because of its playability. So it's a green and white for an enchantment with threshold, whenever an opponent plays a spell, you can put a creature card from your hand into play. That's a powerful ability. Now, threshold, for those of you who don't know, uh, was a really controversial mechanic because it kind of enforced negative play patterns. 
Um, and they, you can actually listen to Morrow talk about that a little bit, but uh, you have threshold as long as you have seven or more cards in your graveyard. Uh, and so it really encouraged like having things played into your graveyard and then being able to get an ability off of it. Uh, it was kind of interesting, but uh, obviously when you do have threshold, this is like a stupidly powerful card. Uh, whenever they play a spell, you can just put a creature card from your hand into play. Uh, that could be any creature. That could be Emrakul uh, for all. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's a beautiful card uh, and certainly one with some, I mean, again, beautiful, amazing artwork, just absolutely stunning, uh, but just a powerhouse, man. This is a really sick card uh, and certainly one I'm happy to have. This is not one that I've ever picked up. Uh, it does have a decent amount of value. Uh, and so, hey, I'm cool to have it. This is a super cool card. <laughs> uh, really love this. I'm not a big creature deck kind of guy. Uh, I do love combo decks and things like that. And so um, just kind of beating face with some creatures isn't my favorite thing. However, a card like this is really, you know, where those decks get to, to kind of do their thing and show their, show their stuff. And so uh, really powerful card. Really happy to have it if I do build a commander deck. I don't know what the ban list is in Commander. Uh, this doesn't, uh, I don't think it's on there. Somebody correct me, uh, you Commander players, but I wouldn't be terribly surprised. It's very good in my opinion. All right, guys, the last two stacks, we've got artifacts and we've got a couple lands. We, uh, our first one here, and our only artifact actually is a Meek Stone, revised Meek Stone. Artifact for one, any creature with power greater than two may not be untapped as normal during the untap phase. What this does is essentially lock down a lot of aggro decks, man. This uh, this is a really interesting card. It's mostly a sideboard card that I have seen, uh, but it does kind of a similar job that you see um, against like uh, like Ensnaring Bridge. It kind of locks down the attack step. Uh, now, Ensnaring Bridge has a little bit higher of a ceiling, uh, in my opinion. But what this also can do is shut down like tapped activated abilities of creatures that have a power to uh or greater uh, or excuse me just greater than two uh and so you actually get a lot of really interesting play patterns when you play this at the right time where you really shut down a lot of what the opponent's doing uh and so it's not necessarily a card that you're going to see a ton of but it is a really unique piece of artwork and a really unique kind of prison card uh and i like i said earlier i do love prison cards in general uh and so this is just a really interesting one uh very happy to have it love the old white border i know a lot of people are kind of Back and forth on the white border thing. I like them personally. Uh, and so I'm happy to have this in a revised version. Uh, would love to afford some of the older versions, but I think they're a little much. Uh, and so we're not gonna be able to do that, but just a really cool card. All right, guys. So the last two cards we have are lands. The last card in particular is one of the high, I think the highest value card that we've ever seen in the binder. But first, we're adding another unglued card. <laughs> uh, last week, guys, we had the sheep token. Uh, this week, we have got a beautiful mountain from Unglued. Unglued, like I said last week, was a joke set. It was a spoof on the game. We've had a lot of spoof sets since then, um, unsets as they are called, but the lands always tend to be really, really good, and this was the, the genesis of all of it. This was the original uh, kind of text, not textless, but full art land style. That beautiful vintage frame, man. I don't know what it is about that, but I love it. Uh, absolutely stunning. I would love to get one of each of the lands. Uh, so I'm hoping that they show up on the random Scryfall search. That again is how these cards are picked. But uh, just, I mean, how, what else can you say? It's a beautiful full art land. Uh, really happy to have this. Really happy to have this in the collection binder and a good card to show off because again, it's one of the older ones. It's not something you get to see every day. Uh, and so it's just really cool. These really do I mean, they hold value. They're not a, a super valuable card by any means, but these old school basic lands tend to have a little bit of value to them. Uh, and this is certainly no different. I'm very, very happy to have this. And finally, guys, we come to uh, the highest value card we have ever added to the binder. I know we're only three weeks in uh, to this binder, but the original Blood Crypt from Dissension, I believe. I think it's Dissension. Uh, this is OG Ravnica uh, block. And the original Shocklands are something that, in my opinion, will always hold at least some amount of value. Uh, part of that is due to the fact that they're dual lands, so you can obviously pull them uh, with your fetch lands because they do count in this case as a swamp and a mountain. Uh, but on top of that, just the unique playability in general, uh, you can have these enter untapped for paying two life if you'd like. 
or you can have them enter tap depending on you, what you need at the time. Uh, and so these original pieces, these have been reprinted like a decent number of times at this point. I mean, every Ravnica set basically has these. Um, but the uh, the intention here is to get the originals. Uh, the originals will always hold, I think, obviously a, a lot more value than the, the reprints. Uh, and they do have unique artwork. So these aren't pieces of artwork that I believe have be, been reprinted. I think every time they've done the new ones, they've done uh, brand new artwork for them. And so this is really, really special in my opinion. Uh, again, from the original Ravnica block is one of my favorite blocks. I love it. Uh, and so it's so cool to have these. I never got to pick these up when I was younger collecting. Uh, and so this is a really special card for me. Uh, again, you may have tons of them, <laughs> and that's totally fine, but uh, the fact is, this is special in my opinion, and so I love this card. This does add quite a bit of value to the, the binder as a whole, uh, and definitely our top runner right now, although I think next week uh, we're going to beat it out. Maybe the week after, we'll see. Uh, we do have a higher value card in the binder now, uh, and I'm just going to spoil it now. It's close to $100. Just going to say that. Uh, we're not going to say what it is. We'll, we'll talk about that. Maybe let me know what your thoughts are down below. Give, uh, give some speculative guesses, but guys, this is a beautiful one. I'm so happy to have this. I would love to get all the original shock lands in this binder. I think that would be very, very cool, but man, just a beautiful card. All right, guys, that wraps up the next 12 cards. As always, we will have a completion aspect as well as a, I don't know which side they're going to be on, a completion aspect as well as a value aspect of the binder as a whole right now. Uh, I believe we are up to like, what, 10% completed. So we're actually getting our way through it. Uh, but on top of that, we have added quite a bit of value at this point. And so we're really pushing that. Uh, guys, this is an amazing series. This is so, so, so special to me. Uh, and so I'm really excited to share this with you guys. I know this doesn't get the viewership that our gameplay does because we've done so much gameplay and it's kind of what we do. Um, but this is actually more important in my view. Uh, I'll just be honest. This is so special to me. Uh, and so thank you guys so much for, for those of you who do watch, who do like, <clears throat> and especially those who share your comments down below. I would love to hear your stories, love to hear your collection updates as well. This is something that we can do together uh, and hopefully kind of break down and get a little bit more personal about magic as a whole and what kind of cards we like to collect, to, uh, to enjoy. And uh, yeah, that's what this series is about. That's all it is. So thank you guys so much. I really do appreciate it. I love you all very much. Have a fantastic weekend. I will be getting back from our vacation uh, as of yesterday when this goes out. Uh, and so just as a heads up, uh, I'm trying to make sure we've got content all the time as I'm getting back. But if we miss a day or anything like that, I do apologize. Thank you guys so much though for being patient. I love you all. I'll see you again soon.